what's exactly happening in Nepal and why have the Nepalese become so hostile? Is it just KP Sharma Oli, the chief minister, uh, the prime minister, beg your pardon, or is there really an anti-India sentiment? How much of China is involved? To talk about all this and a lot more, I've got Dr. Minendra Rijal, former minister for information and communications and parliamentary affairs in the government of Nepal. He's also the member of the Nepalese Congress. Mr. Rijal, thank you so much. My first question to you, what do you have to say about the recent comments that have been made by a certain gentleman? Of course, I mean, I would not read too much into it. Uh, the reason why I, I believe the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, issued a statement of clarification precisely says it. I mean, don't take it too seriously. Uh, if I were at my Prime Minister's shoes, I would not have said it. He's already said it. So I guess, I mean, if we read too much into it and then use it as, a, as a something that's going to uh, create more provocations, that's not going to go be good for either of us, uh, either Nepal or India. Mr. Rajal, uh, now, what was this great hurry in revising Nepal's maps? Something which you've not done. No, no, we, we are not in a hurry. We uh, have been raising this issue for the last 23 years. First time we raised this issue was back in 1997. And since then, it has been in, uh, raised in all bilateral meetings. Uh, since 2000, it has been recognized as outstanding border issue. We have waited for more than 23 years to get this resolved. And the last communication we received from India was uh, once both countries and societies are done fighting with the uh, COVID-19 crisis, uh, we can meet at the secretary level and resolve it. Uh, we are hoping that something of that sort would, ha would happen. But all of a sudden, we heard the news that uh, uh, Minister of Defense uh, virtually inaugurated the road. And not only that, uh, your army chief uh, went on record to say that uh, Nepal is uh, doing this at the, at the prompting of one of the neighbors, which I think was uh, uh, on call for. Uh, so I guess I mean, uh, uh, Indian audience and Indian policymakers all, 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 will be, uh, are well, uh, will be well advised to uh, uh, review what they have done and what have created the okay. situation that we are in today. Okay. Now, uh, why is dialogue not being given a chance? Don't you think that confrontation will never lead us anywhere? Dialogue will always be the way forward. Do you think that this present dispensation in Nepal is anti-dialogue as far as India is concerned? No, I mean, it has to be resolved through dialogue. We have always always said that. What we have say, uh, emphasized uh, time and again is uh, we are willing to sit down with our Indian, uh, Indian counterpart, uh, present our evidences, take a look at the evidences Indian side has, and then based upon the merit of the evidence, both sides have, uh, we can get a resolution to it. Otherwise, I mean, we be, if we be too subjective and then uh, say uh, this belongs to us or this belongs to you, that's not going to take us anywhere. I mean, it's a, at the end of the day, evidences do count. And let's look at the evidences and then get a resolution. Dr. Rajal, now your prime and ministers... Our, our complaint yeah. precisely is hmm. uh, we are hoping that uh, uh, Indian government will... Uh, would not do anything during this COVID-19 crisis. Once the crisis is over, mm. uh, both sides will sit down at the secretary level and, the, and then people at the lower level can follow it up and that has not happened. And okay. that really made us uh, uh, feel bad that uh, sure. India was doing uh, something unilaterally that uh, created the situation that okay. we are in today. Now, now uh, I'll tell you what is the sense in India. Your prime minister's utterances make it appear as if he's close to China. His repeated meetings with the Chinese envoy also seem to give the same impression. What's your impression? First part, uh, when you say uh, some of the statements that you're referring to, I would certainly agree with you. Had those statements not come, it would have done much better to uh, both Nepal and India. Uh, but uh, once the statements are already out, I guess I mean, if we try to create a life of its own, that probably is not going to help much. The second part of his statement uh, that he has done it done it at the prompting of one of the neighbors, uh, nothing could be uh, less informed than the, uh, the, this conclusion. So I mean, uh, Nepal would not do it at the prompting of any neighbors. But we, have, uh, we have had a very friendly uh, relationship with both of our neighbors for, from time immemorial. We're not going to ruin it. Uh, we understand the importance uh, 
and special characteristics and the profoundness uh, of our relationship with India. And uh, also would like to tell our uh, friends in, uh, and colleagues in India that uh, our relationships with China is also important. But at the same time, we understand the uh, importance and uh, depth of the relationship uh, with our, with our uh, friend in India. What's your assessment of uh, Mr. Oli's tenure as Prime Minister? I mean, I am one of his fiercest critics in the, in, in the parliament. But the point I'm trying to make here in, uh, and in many other interviews that I've given is my opposition to him ends at the border, uh, Nepal's international border. Beyond that, uh, you should all think of as, uh, us as Nepali people uh, presenting a coherent point of view. Uh, I, I am, my coming out to India and opposing him is not going to do any good. I'm, as far as domestic policy is concerned, as, as far as his, sure. uh, domestic, uh, his handling of domestic issues are concerned, I am I'm very critical of him. Sure. But I mean, that does not change my position uh, be, uh, uh, as far as the no, uh, land, Dimpia uh, Dura, Lipulek and Kalapani is concerned. On mm. that uh, issue, Prime Minister and I are together. Prime, all the parties, not only Prime Minister and I, all uh. political parties in Nepal uh, are together. We passed the uh, constitutional amendment with the consensus vote. Mm. Uh, so, I mean, his his... His performance uh, on the domestic front is different from uh, my, sure. the, the board, outstanding border issue okay. that we are trying to resolve between our two Fair nations. enough, fair enough. That's very gentlemanlike of you also. Uh, I, I agree with what you're saying. But uh, Mr. Rijal, don't you think that the statement of your Prime Minister on Ayodhya should have at the very least been avoided? I mean, this should have been avoided. I do not agree with what he said. And that precisely is the reason why uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs has issued a statement of clarification. So I would uh, take uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs' statement more seriously than uh, Prime Minister's uh, utterance. Uh, had, I, had, had it been me, I would not have said what he said. But once the, once the bullet's already fired, I mean, if we... Uh, try to make a big issue out of it. We are not going to do good to either of our nations, uh, Nepal and India. Let's just forget I mean, what was said. That should not have been said. That should not have been said. Uh, it has already been said. It has already been fired. It was unfortunate. Uh, let's try to forget that. And then uh, let's just uh, feel that uh, it was never said. Or let's just uh, understand and, rec and recognize that uh, this should not have been said. And uh, let's assume that it was not said. All right, Dr. Rajal, thank you so much. That's very, uh, I hope life worked like that, that uh, certain utter utterances are made, but you tend to just forget that they were ever made. But I can understand the sentiment uh, with which you are making this comment. Thank you very much, Dr. Minen Rajal, for joining us.